Oh boy, you have joined a great sister to sister. What do you do if your friend is always talking about their problems? Talk, 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 talk. Not you. Not me. Not Kathy. No. And what inspires you? Kathy inspires me. Yeah. Check it out. Coming up right now. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. We're so glad that you've joined us today. We are five opinionated women of God. And we bring our hearts to your home. We answer the questions from a biblical perspective. And this question is a really good one. And here it goes. It says, and someone wrote this to us, so thanks a lot. It says, I feel used by my friend. We're always solving her problems, talking about her life. So how do I tell her without losing the friendship? Yow. Talk, 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 talk. Oh, yes. You know I always say that uh, a good word to somebody is better than a kiss, you know, really correcting them. But I'm going to take a little bit of a different slant now and kind of quote my husband. Now, when it comes to friends and their problems, I'm not saying being used in general. That's not good. My husband would say to me years ago, it's not a sin to be used, Roxanne. Oh, I'm like, good. what? Good. It's not bad that your friends That's have to good. lean on you, That's that good. they have to sometimes, you know, be in difficult situations. I'm like, man, you are out of this world. But then I saw Jesus. What did he do? He went to the people. All they wanted was healed. They wanted their needs met. And then when he was in big trouble, they all walked away. That's right. So I have to say this. There are some friends that are myriad that need you, need you, need you. And they're not going to give back to you. There are other friends that you can lean on. And those friends are precious. So you're going to probably have a perspective about changing somebody. And I say sometimes allow yourself that person to fall on you if they need to. And then go to another friend or mother, or father, or whoever, and allow them to uh, pour back into you. Friends are going to be different. Oh, wow. Good. Roxy, that was that fantastic. Was so that was so excellent, mm -hmm. you know, because we do, when we hear terminology like use, we right away put ourselves in that victim mentality. You know, you're using me, but that is what we are here for. You know, um, you often hear me say, how every joint is to supply. It's how yes. God designed it. Confession is good for the soul. Confess your faults one to another. Um, I do believe though that when I am in that position and I feel it draining on my spirit, yes. that it really is designed for me to come closer to the Lord. You use Jesus as the example. Mm -hmm. And so when Jesus poured out, poured out, poured yes. out, but you often, as you read the scriptures and study his lifestyle, uh, part of what he would do is once he poured out, he then pulled away. And so sometimes you have to, you know, come apart so you don't fall apart. And so one of the things that has done for me in my walk has encouraged me to stick close to that friend that sticks closer than a brother, and that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Instead of leaning on that friend to give back to me cool. what perhaps God has designed me to pour into oh, them. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think, though, that... The Obviously, this person's asking for advice and that they, they cherish the friendship because right. they want to keep the friendship intact. And boundaries are necessary. They keep Absolutely. relationships healthy and intact Absolutely. when you have boundaries. So I think, you know, pulling away in this situation would, would, would also be hurtful to this friendship. So I do think there are a time and a place where you do have to speak up and you have to communicate mm -hmm. because Absolutely. there's only so much you can take when there's an imbalance mm -hmm. in a relationship That's right. where when it's so imbalanced, it is going to affect the friendship mm -hmm. and it isn't going to, it's going to affect it in such a negative way that it is going to cause you to drift away mm -hmm. yeah. and it's going to affect it. So there's only so much you can take in an imbalance where you have to communicate it and you do that in love and you say to the person, I'm concerned about our friendship, that I'm concerned about for both of us, That's that it's right. unhealthy, that we're always talking about 
all these issues and that we we never you know we're always talking about these things i think we need to just not think about that sometimes we need to enjoy other things and mm. not always be focused on these negative things well, that would and hurt it's, it, it's someone. hard that to do that's good, but but that's good sound Pain is no. not a bad thing in friendship i couldn't and do it, it and if it's a it's a true friendship it welcomes boundaries like that and but see, I, I think that that is, it, it, that is sound counsel. I think that it's good. I just wanted to bring clarity about the pull away. For me, the pull away, Corey, was not pulling away from the friend or yeah, the person, right. but me pulling away, because now I put an expectation on sure. you that you need to fulfill and meet a need in me. Sure. My pull away is go, because God should be my source. I can't give you godly counsel without being connected right. to God. I, I love no. you guys. I, I, just, I couldn't do it. I think friendship needs to be mutual, where you're mutually um, making deposits, not just always withdrawals. And sometimes the relationship mm. shifts during different seasons. Sure. Yes. And, yes. you know, I, I, ha I had to take notice of this uh, with, you know, several mm -hmm. friendships along the way. All of a sudden, I'm the only one texting. I'm mm. the only one encouraging. I'm the only one calling. I'm the only one driving. And I'm thinking, why am I driving this? They're not leaning sure. into this friendship. So maybe it's time to let them go and like, be be fr you know friends with whoever i've got it you've got to have people that are 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 leaning in with you even in the tough times but you come through it's not always about you and the friendship for many many years oh i like all this but i don't agree but that's okay because i am the kind of person that wouldn't say anything mean no matter what and i know that you girls don't think that's mean but what <laughs> might be you might think is mean i'm going to go to the next question and that you're not going to hear the rest of my <laughs> blah 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 maybe next show Okay, but this one is a good one too because this breaks my heart for people that don't understand this. Scripture says God will give you the desires of your heart. I believe that with everything in me. But what happens when he doesn't? Sometimes he doesn't. Well, you know, I'm going to, Corey and I were talking about this back in the green room. You know, sometimes he does give you your desire. Lots of times. Um, and you find out that, yeah, I wish he hadn't have did that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I have prayed for things and hoped for things and, and God in his Abba, Daddy, loving way granted his daughter her wish, so to speak, only for me to find out like, I do not want that. Sorry, God, take it back. So that, that is when I began to look at to what is the real definition of desire. Um, and that for me, you know, when it, it's just like when we talk about praying, we always say, you know, well, God will tell you yes, no, and wait. Yes. And there are some desires that you are just not ready. You are not in a position. You know, and some desires have nothing to do with God's plan for your life. And so the real thing that God gives you your desires, it has to come from God. When I, we had a question earlier about want. See, when I want something, that's not necessarily a desire. It's just a fleshly, carnal want. But a desire is part of my godly DNA. And he puts that in me so that him and I can relate and connect and then heaven can move on my behalf. So when I pray, I'm praying um, not just in my understanding, but in the spirit. And I'm connected to the spirit because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. You know, and the carnal right, right, right. mind right. fights right. against right. God. Right. And so when I have that desire and it's lined up, that star, if you will, is rightly lined up. When Jesus was born, uh, how did the wise men know that? They seen his star. They felt, followed his star. So um, desire is something that is a part of my DNA from my daddy, um, from my creator. It's innate. It's in me. But it does get tested and tried because mm -hmm. I may, you know, have a, uh, a need for something and he will supply my needs according to his riches and glory. But I think the desire comes more from a place of intimacy with him because that is connected to me fulfilling purpose and destiny. Oh boy. Can I okay. read a scripture that ties into sure. what you're saying? Well, this mm -hmm. scripture comes from Psalm 37, but in the Amplified, yes. it says, delight yourself also in the Lord That's and right. he will give, give you, you, he will give That's you right. the desires. That's right. 
and the secret petitions of your heart. Yes. So this doesn't even just have to do with material things. This That's is like right. you're That's praying right. for this person to come to Christ. Yes. And you're like, you know what, God, since I'm your favorite girl, I know that you're hearing me when I pray, and I know that you're going to give me the de desires and the petitions, the secret petitions of my heart. You have to know that you know that he hears you and he knows intimately the secret desires of your heart and wants to fulfill those desires. And really, there's conditions to these blessings. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and then this will happen. Right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of yes. all wisdom. There's like, there's conditions that we need to read about in, in the Bible. You can't just take one little half of a scripture out of context and say, this is gonna work for me. You've Ooh, gotta yeah. read the Ooh, full good. context. What do you have? Oh wow, they're terrific. Yeah, and the scripture says, as Amy's saying too, you don't get what you want, James says, because you ask amiss. Yes. Yeah, that's right. You ask for your own passions. Right. right. So we have to get in line with that's God's right. word. Right. As my that's sister right. said, what is the mind of Christ? Romans says you have the mind of Christ, right. Romans 12. We Amen. have to understand what the mind of Christ is in this situation. And even Jesus, he said at Gethsemane, not my will. He I don't know if he wanted to go, not wanted to go. He knew his purpose was to go to the cross. He said, not my will, but thy will. What's yes. in the Lord's prayer? Thy will be done. We have to pray that after we think we know our desires, we know our needs, we know our wants, and understand thy will be done. Oh, I like that. That's I like rossy. that. And I just want to clarify one thing. Amy said that she was God's favorite. <laughs> but I, I can tell you that I am God's favorite. But no, 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 even better than that, you, you are, are God's favorite. <laughs> Believe that, will But I'm you? his favorite favorite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, stay right there, we'll be right back. Okay, well, we are solving the problems of the world while you're getting a cup of coffee, just so you know. But at Sister With to our Sister, audience. right? Yeah. At Sister to Sister, we love having you here in the midst of our conversation. And I'm wondering how you're going to feel about this one. This is good. I'm going to give this one to Amy. She's oh. going to love this. Okay. Amy, here we go. My ex husband remarried. Someone wrote this to us. So a lot of you are dealing with this. And now I have to share my son with another mommy and I don't like it. So what should I do? Okay, I would say, do you want a healthy relationship with your children? Can you think about your children more than you're thinking about yourself and more about than him and the, the new wife? Like if you want a really good relationship with your children, you have to make really strong decisions to get along with now the other side of the family, the new mom with your ex-husband. I've seen this go both ways of really, really hardcore, cold-hearted, fight for the kids, and it's devastating for the kids. They're torn apart, everybody's miserable, and I've also seen it where families are having Thanksgiving together <laughs> with the new mom, with the kids, mm -hmm. with even the ex-in-laws. So there is a way, and there's a way you can look at it to say, you know what, maybe I shouldn't fight against her, but maybe we should work together and possibly maybe even sort of be friends in a wow, way. Wow, that's wow. good. For the, the ex-in-laws, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would that's be amazing. It's honestly, looking at it, almost like is it division or multiplication oh boy. is it a competition or is it another person that can love my children, children. and you can make it a negative experience or a positive mm -hmm. experience it's mm -hmm. another person right. in the sphere of influence right. in your children's lives that can love your children and that you can you know you can be a person that can guide them and 
teach them and tell them this is the things they like and that they love mm. and you can you yes. can make that a positive experience and it, it might be really painful for you it's like mm. you said you're putting your kids needs before yeah. your yeah. own and that will hurt mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sitting here saying that that's going to be an easy thing and that oh yeah just, just hand over yeah. you know all the things that you normally do to some other woman right. that's mm. going to be really really hard mm -hmm. it's it's not going to be an easy thing, but in the grand scheme, this is for the love of your children yes. and you are expanding the sphere of influence and it's never a good thing to talk negatively about the adults in the sphere of influence mm -hmm. in your children's lives. Oh boy. I, I think you both um, have given a real clear perspective from a positive side. Right. I just want to give another perspective, yes. not sure. counter attacking sure. yours, right. but right. you know, just a reality, you know, mm -hmm. number one, I'm probably still grieving the marriage. Yes. Number two, how did this even happen? You know, was this the other woman? Mm -hmm. And now you're telling then me to embrace different. her? Right. Then let's go even farther. What is her principles? I'm a Christian. He might have married, you know, somebody that we don't share the same sure. principles. And so I'm teaching my child this. And yes. when they go over to daddy's house, they're being taught something sure. else. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, let's just put all the cards on the table. Who wants to hear their child refer to another woman as mother? You know, I don't, I really don't think any of us do. It has proven itself in adoption yeah. even, yeah. you know, that there is something in aid in that child um, that they, mm -hmm. uh, they want to find their birth mother. And then the mother that has raised them mm -hmm. begins to struggle right. a little bit right. because what's mm -hmm. going to happen to me? Yes. What changes in my relationship with this child that I have raised? So the reality is, it, I think both of you did a tremendous job yes. of bringing, this is what it can be, mm -hmm. and this is a very positive outlook on it, but what am I working with? And nobody knows until you're actually in the midst of dealing with that. I was a part of a panel called uh, Pink Table Talk. It was a spinoff from um, Jada Pickett's Red Table Talk. And, you know, when people are dealing with being remarried, your identity is wrapped up into that. So it's hard for me to really think clearly about my child when I am still dealing with what's going on in me. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is, this is, this is so good. You are so real yeah. all the time. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> flow brings real stuff. That's what we call it, the wisdom of flow. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. But I'm going to move on to the next question because I want everybody to be able to answer this one. It's so good and it's so simple, but I think you will like this question too. And it just says, what inspires you. And I'm going to go to my sister, Corey. And don't say me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can say me, Corey. On any given day, you can literally find me like crying, watching videos on my phone. Like, you oh, know, right. like the videos of like, okay, this will always get me military soldiers like reuniting yes. with their yes. families. Yes. Yes. I, yes. There is yes. never yes. not a time where I'm not going to cry when I see that. Aww. That anything right. patriotic with with military service men and women is always going to inspire me. But um, very recently, um, the Mr. Rogers movie mm -hmm. is are, right here in Pittsburgh is mm -hmm. being released and just kindness mm -hmm. right. just everyday small acts of kindness that is what inspires me when you see you know somebody helping someone in the grocery store get something off the, the shelf or mm -hmm. just those in your community and those small the pay it forward someone paying for somebody oh, at the right. yeah, the, yeah. The, the, those are the things that inspire me you, you know there's all those big things that happen right. but those small everyday acts of kindness yeah. Those are the things that inspire me. Oh, Corey, that's so well said. That's good. Roxy, yeah. what inspires you? Well, you know what one of my favorite scriptures is, and I guess it goes a little bit along the lines of Corey, that God makes everything beautiful in his time, and he has set eternity in our hearts that we won't know all the vastness of God. So inspiring to me when I think about it is a person who can look at everything, because you know I'm a little bit of a pessimist, 
that can look at everything and see a silver lining in it. My mother's going through an illness, but she gets up and pushes right. forward. She's here. My husband uh, goes through things, sees the positive side. So if we can look at every situation and everybody to see something that God has planted in their heart that's beautiful about them or will right. become beautiful. Right. As Flo says, we are working on our testimony. Amen. We're Amen. not perfect. Amen. Then we can be inspired to love them where they are and to help them grow where they need to be. Oh, I like it. I like it. Oh, I can't wait to hear what inspires you girls. Mine is so simple. It's just truth. Oh, yeah, it, 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 it's truth. I, I, um, I don't, I, I'm sure everybody can relate to this, that you have been somewhere in your walk and you just didn't have the answer, you know? Uh, and sometimes when you draw close to God, you're in a season of prayer and fasting and he begins to show you things in you. Mm -hmm. Truth can be helpful. Truth mm -hmm. can be painful. Yes. Truth can sometimes even be kind of ugly, you know, That's because true. you begin to see the things in you that need to be changed. However, truth is so necessary. And we, you know, we often quote the scripture, you know, truth will set you free. That's okay. not what it says. It's the truth oh. you know will set you free. Okay. So my endeavor to know That's truth good. so that I can walk in the liberty of Christ is uh, probably my, my, my deepest uh, inspiration. inspiration. I like it. Mm -hmm. Amy, sister. Okay. My husband inspires me. Uh, stories in the Bible, like the David and the mm -hmm. giant and the, the actual stories inspire me. Esther and Ruth and Rahab and and um, historical fiction stories inspire me, hmm. especially World War I, World War II era. Um, I'm inspired by entrepreneurs, people that have nothing and start and yeah, build and develop. Mm -hmm. People that um, maybe are born with disabilities that, that push through and do really cool things. Like mm -hmm. I love the, the coming from nothing or coming from a struggle and pushing through to accomplish things in life. I that like inspires that. Me. I like yeah. that. And truthfully, I'm inspired by people who trust the Lord despite circumstances that seem insurmountable because I believe that all things are possible and that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That's my motto and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and we'll be right back to wrap this up. Are you feeling used by a friend? Did you not get the desires of your heart? Do you have an unfulfilled relationship? Well, there's a scripture for that. And we always end the show with a scripture. Today's scripture can be found in Psalm 30, verse five. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. If you're a child of the king, his favor is forever. Trials and tribulations are for a moment. And there's a morning coming that the joy will last forever. And if you are a child of the King, you will spend eternity with God. But I want you to know for sure that you are a child of the King. If you don't know that for sure, I want you to call the number on the screen. Talk with someone. You can know that for sure today and know that you are a child of the King. Oh, I love That's that good. Corey said that. I love that whole mm. thing. And you know what else we do as sister to sister? We end with this scripture and it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman sharpen the other. And then I add this, these girls, these sisters make me a much better Kathy. And I'm not kidding about that. <laughs> We're so grateful you're with us. We are sister to sister. Thank you.